CWI prep course, penetrant testing, PT, module 10, part six. Learning objectives. In this module, we're gonna to touch base on typical visible dye penetrant portable kits, penetrants, developers, penetrant uh, advantages and disadvantages. Penetrant testing, PT. Liquid penetrant testing is a non-destructive method of detecting surface flaws in solid material and structures. Cracks, porosity, gouges, laps, seams, and other types of flaws can be found using this technique. Penetrant testing is a process in which the liquid penetrant is drawn into small openings by capillary action when it is applied to a surface. After a specified time, excess penetrant is removed from the surface and developer is applied to the surface. The developer absorbs residual penetrant from the flaw leaving a bright colored penetrant bleeding through the developer's white background giving a clear visual indication of cracks, porosity, or other flaws. This is a surface technique. It'll find subsurface defects that break into the surface, but if you have a crack that doesn't break to the surface, you're not going to find it with dye penetrant. Here's a couple examples and kind of a quick overview of where we're going to go. We're going to get into a little more depth. Liquid penetrant testing, PT. Um, steps in PT procedure, clean and dry component, apply penetrant, remove excess, apply developer, visual inspection, and then post clean the component. Advantages, portable and easy to use, surface breaking defects only. This is a typical visible dye portable kit. You've got the cleaners and the developers and the penetrants all in a kit. You've got your instructions in there, some brushes and wipes, and you're ready to go. It's in like a little suitcase carry case. You got cleaners, like I said, you, you know, you clean it, you put the penetrant on, you wipe the penetrant off, and then you spray the developer on, and you wait. X amount of minutes or whatever your time is, and then your penetrant's going to bleed out of the um, cracks, subsurface cracks or um, vacancies in the material, and it's going to show up in contrast on the developer. This is a typical hydrometer. Hydrometers are used to measure the specific gravity of water-based wet developers. The hydrometers used in liquid penetrant testing are floating type instruments. This is just going to tell you if you've got the right specific gravity for the amount of water that you've got in the wet based, the water based wet developer. Here's a typical portable black light, nothing too fancy. As you can see, I borrowed this from Uncle Sam, so it's not exactly a fantastic picture, but you get the idea of what's going on. It's just a bulb, a filter, a housing, a transformer, and it's a black light. It's just used for fluorescent dyes. So you get in a dark place, you shine the black light on it, and it'll um, really bring out that fluorescent dye. Like turning off a light and seeing something, you know, a fluorescent poster or something. But this will show you cracks. But this is the black light that is used. Penetrants can be categorized according to their color, whether or not they are fluorescent or a visible dye, whether they can be removed by water, solvent, or an emulsification process, or by the level of their sensitivity. Additional classifications may be their degree of toxicity, corrosive properties, viscosity, wetting ability, flash point, temperature stability, and or their use for other special conditions or materials. The simplest to use but least sensitive of these penetrants is the visible dye or color contrast penetrants. The visible dye penetrants contain a dye, usually a bright red, but sometimes a special color such as blue that can be seen under ordinary white visible light. Here you can see them spraying the, um, in the far lower right hand corner, you can see them putting on the um, developer to draw the 
die out of the crack. Here you can see where there's already on the left hand side um, they've already done the penetrant testing and you can see where the dye is starting to bleed through. The penetrant is starting to bleed through the developer so you can see there's some kind of defect or indication there that probably needs to be repaired. Solvent removers or cleaners are normally used in conjunction with oil-based penetrants to remove excess penetrant from the test article surfaces. Examples of solvent removers include methyl chloride, isopropyl alcohol, naphtha, and mineral spirits, which is paint thinner, in addition to special formula proprietary removers. In selecting solvent remover, those materials approved by the penetrant manufacturer should normally be used. So don't go off the grid and start using some um, re solvent remover or cleaner that isn't recommended by the manufacturer. The manufacturer of the dye and the developer will give you an example of the solvent that they want to be used with their dye penetrant system. So it usually comes as a kit. Use this, this, and this. Don't mix and match because you don't know what's gonna happen as far as you know mixing this chemical with this one. You might there might be some unforeseen effects or fumes generated that might not be so good for people. But generally, it comes as a kit. They're gonna tell you what to use. Follow their directions. Developers. Dry developer is a fluffy chalk-like powder that is applied to dry test surfaces after the removal of excess penetrant. For the purpose of absorbing penetrant from discontinuities and enhancing the resultant penetrant indications. Of the different developers available, dry developer is the most adaptable to rough surfaces and automatic processing. It is also the easiest to remove. Sensitivity is about the same as that of the water-soluble developer described in the following paragraph. Water-based wet developers function similar to, similarly to dry developers except they can be applied prior to drying the test specimen. Two types of developer are available. In one, the developer particles are held in suspension in water and require continuous agitation to keep the particles in suspension. In the other, the developer powder is dissolved in water forming a solution. Once mixed, they remain mixed. Of the two water-based wet developers, the water-soluble developer is usually the more sensitive. Non-aqueous wet developer is a suspension of developer particles in a rapid drying solvent. It is most often employed with solvent removed penetrant processing and like dry developer is applied only to dry surfaces. Of all the developers, the non-aqueous wet developer is the most sensitive in detecting fine discontinuities. The evaporation of the solvent carrier helps to draw the penetrant from the discontinuities. Special Purpose Penetrant Materials in addition to the conventional penetrants, emulsifiers, removers, and developers employed in liquid penetrant testing, there are low sulfur and low chlorine materials for testing nickel alloys, certain stainless steels, and titanium. Special purpose inert materials are available for testing articles that come in contact with liquid oxygen, rubber, or plastic. Penetrants compatible for use with human food processing systems are also available. There are high temperature penetrants for testing hot welds, etc., and special penetrants for testing at low temperatures. There are super sensitive penetrants for detecting extremely fine discontinuities and penetrants that provide sufficient contrast and sensitivity without a developer. There are low energy emulsifiers and inhibited solvent removers to slow down emulsification and the removal of excess penetrant. There are also wax and plastic film developers that absorb and fix penetrant indications to provide permanent records. The selection and usage of these materials are largely dependent on the particular process used and the controlling specifications and standards. 
Penetrant, six forms of developers. There are six forms of developers of which the non-aqueous are normally used for inspecting welds. Non-aqueous developers are white powders mixed with a volatile solvent. The following are six developer forms. Dry developer, water soluble developer, water suspendable, non-aqueous type 1, fluorescent, solvent base, non-aqueous type 2, visible, solvent based, and special application. Penetrant applications. For almost all materials where surface flaws are openings in the surface, such as cracks, liquid penetrant will be used. The main limitations are absorptive and porous surfaces, rough surfaces, or chemical incompatibility. Liquid penetrants are used extensively for both ferrous and non-ferrous metals, for production and service inspection, and for both large and small specimens. Magnetic particle testing has some advantages over liquid penetrant testing for ferromagnetic materials. One main advantage is that magnetic particle testing can find near subsurface flaws. Therefore, with all other factors being equal, magnetic particle testing of ferromagnetic materials is normally preferred to liquid penetrant testing. One of the advantages of liquid penetrant testing is the ability to perform this testing with the minimum of facility support. Often, for visible dye penetrants, no electrical power equipment or tools other than buckets and rags are necessary. For this reason alone, liquid penetrant testing finds applications where no other method can even be considered. It's telling us that Penetrant's got some advantages and disadvantages. Advantage over something like magnetic particle testing is mag particle testing doesn't work on aluminum or titanium. Dipenetrant does. But dipenetrant isn't going to find a near subsurface flaw in iron. But they're both going to find cracks in iron materials and steels. But if it isn't magnetic, you can't use, if it's not a magnetic material, you can't use magnetic particle testing on it. So that's one advantage of penetrant. And then it's telling us another advantage is that you don't need electrical power. You need a half a dozen spray cans of, you know, the developer, the cleaner, and the dye penetrant, you know. Uh, handful of shop rags, maybe a brush, and you're ready to go. So that's another advantage of the dye penetrant. It's a very um, versatile system. It's not going to find every flaw. You know, it doesn't work on flaws on the interior of a material, but it works on anything that breaks into the surface, and it's a good, um, good for non-ferrous materials as well as ferrous materials and also good at, for weld inspection. Advantages and disadvantages of penetrant, PT. Usually advantages, usually very cheap, often is the cheapest method. Usually quick, even for large parts. Can be portable, taken to a test site. Reasonably easy to interpret. Disadvantages can only detect defects open to the surface. No automatic or permanent records. It's not like x-ray where you've got film often requires a pre-cleaning step. Use of fluorescence required for maximum sensitivity. Not good enough for rough or porous surfaces. Penetrants chemically attack some rubbers and plastics and should have a low sulfur or chlorine content with used with certain stainless steels, nickel, or titanium alloys. Summary. In this module, we touched on typical visible dye penetrant portable type kits, penetrants, developers, and the advantages of penetrant testing.